What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Silence channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.22 on the legendary map Vault, which is a big map and this game is including 3 evil factions and only 1 good faction, with in total 3 Isengards, who would have thought, you know, a faction we barely see on this channel, couple of people, but trust me on that one, Isengard is very strong on big maps and Vault is for sure a big map. And he's fighting against Gondor on the top side. And we have two Isengards fighting against each other at the bottom side. So the Gondor player was trying to creep this, but Isengard will be able to contest this, no problemo. The war chanted Uruks are no joke. He will hit you like an absolute truck. And he will say thank you for the, for the leash. He will get the money too. And Gondor, knowing that he can't contest this, he will just go to the enemy Lambert Mill. This, Gondor, this Isengard was opening with double furnace. And this Isengard was opening with a Uruk pit. And this Isengard was opening with double furnace, or one furnace actually. But he has the best spot at the bottom left side. The reason why this spot is the best is because, because you have like four Lambert Mills next to your base. And this will give you the full bonus of the wood bonus, making your structures 30% cheaper. 30%! That's a lot of money. And with that being said, he will be able to fill up the bees. Each furnace will only cost you 245. You will save over a hundred resources on every single furnace you will build up. In the meantime, Isengard was able to creep this, no problemo. If Gondor doesn't demolish this farm in time, they will get level 2 out of that, which means more DPS. And this Gondor is trying to save up for the steeple. And he was able to get this under his control too. But Isengard has still three Lambert Mills in a whole amazing and great looking castle. Tim, Tim, Tim. And he's going for the war pit. And that's what you can do. When you play two Isengards in one team, one, one can go for the Uruk pit, and the other one can go for the mobility part advantage and build up the work pit, okay? Who let the works out? And the Hobbit is also not being used for defensive purposes, which will cause Gondor to lose multiple settlements. And he didn't even capture the one behind his castle. So his eco is not looking too good. He has a stable now upon the field. This Isengard's eco is looking way better compared to his ally. But also this Isengard is very rich and super wealthy. That's why he's able to build up the Vork Pit and Uruk Pit simultaneously. Which I don't like it because I would rather go for Lourdes. Lourdes is an incredibly strong hero and has a very good skilling too with the leadership and with the pillage later on. So the earlier you recruit them, the better it is. The Vorks are out just in time and looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. This is going to be disastrous. Oh boy. <laughs> One trample to rule them all. In the meantime, Isengard was able to reclaim the settlement too. The Gondonite is coming out to destroy the slaughterhouse, no problemo. But Isengard's piece is looking phenomenal. Unlike this Isengard's piece, this Isengard looks to be quite poor. And remember, in BFME 1, you can't send money to your allies. So you need to take care of yourself by yourself. And for that reason, I'm a big fan of opening with Double Furnace when I play Isengard on a map like Vault. This will give me the security I need, you know. Maybe I will trade a little bit of an early game presence, but I will be way stronger and way wealthier in the mid to late game. And I think that's the essential part. Oh, what happened? Did you guys see this? If an Elvin Wood on the on the war creep, but the Elvin Wood doesn't nullify the whole ability, which will grant the Wargs 40% more damage and 15% more armor, making them simply stronger for the duration, which is 30 seconds. The whole ability has 1 minute and 40 seconds cooldown, so it's not the best ability in the game, but it will make you make sure that you will win the early skirmishes, which actually is quite important. How, however, it was a 2v1 situation. And for that reason, Isengard player will be forced to disengage. He also demolished the work pit and going for the armory now. He actually purchased the fire all first, which is a big mistake. You need to go for the banner, forge blades and heavy armor first. You don't need early game, you know, fire rolls. That's not going to add too much value. You always need to think about when you have to make a choice. You need to always make a, make a choice and pick the one option which gives you value right now, okay? So even though fire roll is going to be important later on, but it's not valuable as it is right now. So going for the forge blades, you know, getting to make your war rider stronger is going to be way more impactful at this current stage of the game. If Lourdes 
I think he wants to do too many things simultaneously. And his money won't be enough for this one. The Isinger player finding his way back into the game. Of course, the industry is quite helpful. There is a outpost for the orange Isinger player. And here's a whole great looking castle. Here's a work pit, Uruk pit, outpost control. He might even go for the second outpost very, very soon. And the money will be secured also by the yellow Isinger player. However, actually he took all the, all the money. That's good. Nice micro with the pikeman. I like it. In the meantime, Lourdes is creeping slowly by Charlie. Remember, the bow damage against structures is not the greatest. So in a situation like this, it's better to draw your sword and creep with your sword, which will give you much more damage against structures. Okay, full base for Gondor. He also went for Faramir. Look him, you know. <laughs> He's on his horse, but it looks like he has like an arrow or like a bow in his hand on this picture. Level 2, they will recover. And also, Lourdes has been recruited. We have not many creeps left on the map, actually. You know, this is one of the last remaining creeps. Because Gondor was able to creep the top side. The middle side is pretty much completely gone. And Isengard was able to get this one. So this Lourdes can't creep and can't cheat his way to get a lot of levels without fighting against enemy units. And he needs to fight hard for the experience he needs. And again, the power spike we are looking for is level 3, first of all, because of the carnage. And then later on, it's the level 5, okay? Level 5 is a massive power spike with 60% more DPS for nearby units, allied units. That's actually big. And Mateusz is pinging his ally and saying, you know what? Let's capture this outpost so you can build a well and a statue so I can get there whenever I need. And that's the great part of having a combination between good and evil. Because the weakness of evil is the lack of sustain and this weakness is going to be completely negated if you play a 2v2 match and your ally is either Gondor, which is the case in this game, or Rohan. Isengard is building an army warfare of Mordor. Pikeman combo, big more combos, Lumber Mill Worker is going to on a, on a vacation. He's going to Antalya in Turkey, you know? It's summertime, you know? Oh, I worked all day, all night, for many, many months, and I still gotta keep working. <laughs> I don't know why he went all the way to the spot to keep working, actually. Okay, Tim is pinging his ally. He's like, I'm ready, dude. Prepare. Let's go ham, okay? We are not here to be eaten. We are here because we want to have meat back on the menu. That's, that's the reason, okay? And he has four combos. Very strong. But remember, Lourdes is still only level 3. So, in this situation, with the statue, which will actually give you a lot of extra DPS and armor, so it's way better than Warchant. I mean, not Warchan, I mean, it's way better than uh, Lourdes leadership because Lourdes leadership is only giving you damage. Armor is better in those skirmishes. And remember, this player has also the Warchan. Even though you have two Warchans on the other side, you can't use two Warchans on the same army. I mean, you can, but it won't affect them. Only war one Warchan can be active at the same time, okay? But we have a Saruman on the field, which Matthews doesn't have yet. He's preparing his castle for a potential bleed rush, which won't happen, but he's going for a bleed rush himself. Boom! Fireball on your face! The clumping, the splash, and Saruman has the crater bonus too. Remember, he made those Uruks, and he will steal them all! Fight for me and I will reward you. Farami got crippled. That's an absolute disaster. If Lourdes could survive this, but he can't, but Farami is going to die. He's going to be killed by the Berserker. Just like Haldir did in the films. In Faramir, there is no hope. The combos will be taken over again by Matthews very, very soon. But they will run into a massive army of crossbowmen and pikeman combo from the ally of the Yellow Isengard player, Ericsson. And of course, fire beats swords, okay? Alright, so that's a big W, and you can see the impact, the incredible impact a wizard can have in this game, especially against immobile units which can't get away from your Saruman. This is a disaster. One more fireball. I'm losing my voice over here, boys. Alright, Lord's level 3. Um, he needs two more levels. I mean, this... I don't know. I think the Isengard player should not come to this location. He should jo just go for the for the orange Isengard player. He has, he has no Saruman yet. At some point, we will have two Lourdes and two Saruman. And that's like, you know, 
very strong. You, you could see, like a minute ago, what one Saruman is able to do. Now imagine you have two of them in your team, you know? The worst part you can do is to try to warm tongue the same army with two Saruman simultaneously, because one of them is going to be wasted. <laughs> Don't do this, because you can't steal your ally's army. That's not possible. That's not how the Warm Tongue is designed, actually. Okay. Earth's level 2. He's back also. The map is not, look, not looking too bad. And the, you know, horses from Gondor are not doing too much. Because there are too many pikemen. And pikemen counter the knights of Gondor big time. Lourdes from Matthews is only level 1. He has war riders. He has Saruman. He will level them up. Go. March to Helm's Deep. Leave none alive. The trample is coming in clutch. We gotta keep an eye on the wizard, okay? There comes the war chant, war chant. He will be able to steal, but he got crippled. Fireball, and he's gonna get fireball in safety. He's gonna get fireball in safety. No way. He was crippled. He couldn't move by himself. Why would you help him to move like that? And Matthias will appreciate it. He will say thank you very much i needed your assistance two lords two cripples saruman is still able to do whatever he wants the army from gondor is approaching to you know help his ally a bit lords is running wild he should just throw the sword and use carnage he's gonna use palantir too on the allies horses and lords will be slain will be taken down out of the game and this was not meant to be okay you don't want to do this because cripple means you can't move but abilities like fireball which can knock you back or for example whip from from padrock will still you now smash, smash you oh boy <laughs> okay i mean okay at least this Saruman survived that's like okay-ish in the meantime gonna was able to get a lot of map control of course with the mobility you have with, with your knights and also he's going for ganalf ganalf the gray will be recruited very very soon as if power points are white, not yet, but he's a quarter away only to get there. And he should be getting there very, very soon. So it's a, at this point, I would like to recruit also Boromir. Boromir, put him next to the combos of your ally. He only needs one levels. And your ally will get additionally 60% damage. Very similar to the ability from, from to the leadership from Lourdes. And this can all stack to each other. So basically, Warchant plus 50, Lourdes plus 6, that's 110 in total. Plus 60 is 170 in total. 170% damage leadership. That's kind of nutty. You know, that's a lot. All right. We got to keep an eye on the wizard. There comes the fireball. What is this wizard doing? He's inting, intentionally feeding, actually. He's going to use the warm tongue, but he has no heal. He has no will of Saruman. Ganaf is approaching. He's in the middle of the army. Nobody cares about the white wizard or gray wizard because, because he's gray. Also, do Saruman. He's gonna get not crippled at all. He's gonna cripple the lords from Matthews. A dude who is the least impactful. When there are two wizards as a target, you don't wanna waste your cripple on a lord, dude. Lord is strong, yes. But trust me, that one. Oh my goodness. The level 7 Warcraters from Matthews. Something we don't see very often. And it's a big W for Isengard and Gondor team. A big W. But in the meantime, the yellow Isengard player is going ham on the Isengard castle from Mateusz. Mateusz castle is quite durable with the level 3 furnaces. And in rain is active, which means no damage leadership on this army. Warchan has been negated. Furnace has been destroyed. But there is only one pikeman. Lourdes is level 4 now. He needs only one more level. But Mateusz army is coming. One of the combos is being level 9. And you know how incredible impactful the level advantage in this game is. Fireball will be used to kill the only pikeman. And now the war riders, 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 the Gondor Knights. That's the wet dream right there. That's when you see Vorks and Knights. You need to invest money into more pikemen. Do the wizards of Middle Earth. Gandalf and Saruman. Sides by sight i don't know what to see man who has the <laughs> wait, wait i need to imitate saruman now hmm. it's hard to be christopher lee you know in any situation because this guy is like a crazy voice it's hard to imitate this together my lord <laughs> together my lord gandalf we shall rule middle earth <laughs> Who now has the strength to face against the forces of 
Sariman and Gandalf and against the union of Gondor and Isengard. The answer? Nobody. Nobody. Level 7, level 5. I like those walk riders. I really do. I mean, they're not as crazy scaling into the lead game as, of course, the knights are because they have no chance to get shields, you know, like horseman shields, like Rohan horses can, or the knight shields, like the Gondor horses can. But I think they are still very good because they have this one as a replacement. You know, this is better, but it's only lasting for a small duration 30 seconds, which is not horrible, right? It's like 30 seconds, still quite reasonable. Outpost destroyed, two heroes, dude. Lourdes is still on the level 3 though. And now they are grouping up. We also hear Boromir and Faramir joining. This also, this, I mean, in this case, this is what could happen if Gondor would unite with Isengard in the films. I mean, I'm, I'm like a big what if guy, you understand? Like, I'm a big guy. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a guy that always thinks, what if? You know, what would happen if this would happen? What would happen if this would be... I'm also like this in real life, which is a big mistake, I know. Because it's like you are against the reality. But I'm always thinking about, also in my life, you know, what would happen if this would happen? What would happen if this would happen? And I'm also about Lord of the Rings. I'm always thinking, what would happen if Saruman would not be evil? You know? Oh, boy! He stole the half the army! Where is the cripple man we need you? Uh-oh. Oh, he also stole the wizards, the wizards, the wizards. But the army is crazy. He's gonna use the will of Saruman. The level 9 Saruman is quite tanky. The wizards are coming in clutch. What is this lord doing from Ericsson? Kill him. You have heal. Gun Gondor, heal your Saruman. Heal your allies. Oh, big heal coming from Gondor. Saruman is back to full HP. That's the power of double heal. That's the power of the wizard. Dude, that's a hallelujah. Level 7 Boromir already. Are you kidding me? But there is a huge army without heavy armor on them. There comes the Alvin, which is a big mistake from Gondor. The trample is coming in clutch. Oh, because he stole the army, right? That's why. This dude has stolen the army. But the, you know, the Isengard army from Matthias is so strong. Two wizards are still remaining. It's gonna go for a fireball. Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Run, 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 run. Tim, 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 Tim. <laughs> okay, he's gonna get in safety. He's, you know, fancy footwork. He's very fast. The combos, it's like they are downside. They are actually kind of immobile. There are, of course, multiple downsides of combining units. For example, you lose the ability to switch formations. So basically, every unit, like this one, for example, is the badge formation, which means more damage and less armor. These units, they have like a crazy formation, the porcupine formation, which means more armor, but also like you are immune to, be, to be knocked down, which gives you like a huge bonus damage against Cav. And you can't use any of these formations if you combine any unit. Like in this case, we are talking about Uruks with Pikemen, Uruks with Crossbowmen, or Pikemen with Crossbowmen. These are the three combination of you know, possibilities when you play Isengard. But, you know, it's like good for lazy people. In, you know, when you are a crazy micro player, you can just make Crossbowmen, switch them to the wedge formation, and then make Pikemen to be the front line, but you need to micro around. This way you can just move without microing too much, you know? Cripple him! He, cri he crippled him. Ganoff, is Ganoff now can come, though. I mean, do you have the damage to kill him? You have, like, very weak army. What is this guy doing? Oh! Oh! That's a wrong way, my friend. Leadership also from this lords. Holy! Erikson used... Oh, my! Okay, that's why Matthias is... Look, guys, I want you to understand. Erikson is just like freezing rain and nine power points after that, okay? And Matthias is Balrog. And the other Isinger player, Tim, that's the red Isinger player, he has 11 power points. So I want you to understand that Matthias is at bare minimum nine power points over any other Isinger player in this game. So he's playing a very clean game with the heroes, Saruman, the MVP... The both wizards crazy strong. Shall we not make peace, Gandalf? You and I? Gandalf, uh, Saruman, your stuff is not broken. Your stuff will be reforged so you can fight with me side by side.
I mean, he's coming now with like literally everything. He's Q clicking and coming. He has double siege works here. Berserker to lead the army of Isengard to a potential victory. Um, the yellow Isengard player. He's still an outpost. He has Saruman. He has Lourdes. So he's camp castleless. He lost the castle, but he has still the chance to stay in the game. He's not defeated yet, okay? The pikeman in the front. He's trying to sandwich him. That comes the war chant. Oh, <laughs> this is funny. Don't tell me that this is not funny. Oh, you thought you kept me? Boom, castle acquired. And now what? You want to get rush us? That's lame, dude. Why would you do this? But actually, what real lame is, is this one. But it's not against the rules. You will destroy an enemy castle. It's a 2v2. Okay, Farami has been... What was Farami doing over there? Anyway. Let me take a look into the powerpoints. Oh, oh, oh. Tim has 13. Smart move from Gondor to demolish the buildings. Because, you know, destroying wells and statues will grant you so much. Big mistake from Tim to stay on the Elvin move from your opponent. In which you are basically the weakest. You have zero leadership. Lords is the target. Lords, pay attention. Tim, 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 boy. He's gonna get away just barely, okay? Level 8, level 10. Work rider hard okay big 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 fireball you are fired sorry man <laughs> there comes the love sorry man he's got crippled kind of is coming in clutch we have cloud break from gondor to stun the army from isengard in isengard sorry man is crippled but can anybody get to him and get through a huge uruk army tens of thousands tens of thousands tim he didn't even revive his uh, Saruman. We have 21,000 for Gondor. Gondor is very rich with this level 3 farms all, all over the place. His marketplace. He's super rich. But in the meantime, one part of his wall was broken. A nice sneak attack with the Barista from Tim. But Tim, realistically speaking, needs to help his ally. However, Matthias is not rotating to the last remaining outpost from the Yellow Isinger player, Ericsson. Ericsson has still an outpost with two furnaces in Urukpit, but you will see his money is not that good, right? He has 927. He has the chance to go for the devastation to get a bit more money boost, but that will slow you down. It will actually delay your Balrog even farther. And I think at this point of the game, the only reliable source of damage you have to kill this army of Isengard is, of course, Balrog. It is like a level 10 combo, level 10 Saruman, Lords level 6. You know, Ganav almost level 10. So this army is incredible strong. It's a very snowbally army. And with this two wizards, we have also crazy combat experience. 100 person from this dude. And also, um, 100 person from this dude. So you have 200 person combat experience, which means you are able to level up like three times faster, right? Okay, so this might be the last army battle. This army might have the higher quantity. But trust me now one, this army is way higher quality. You can turn and cripple. At this point, you have like huge damage army. And I think you don't have the damage to kill the heroes either. Right? That's the problem. Alright. They are going for the Gondor outpost. Gondor outpost will fall. That's for, that's for, that's for sure. Matthias is pinging its outpost. He knows... Okay, this has to be the last outpost from my opponent. That's the only reason why Ericsson is not defeated yet. But he has Freezing Green. That's all he can contribute in the next upcoming battle. Can Freezing Green change the outcome of this game? Balrog is reloading. Tim has almost 17 power points. He's also Freezing Green. The one communi communication is very important in those situations. You don't want to use Freezing Green simultaneously, right? You don't you want to use your Freezing Green. Your ally has to wait for the duration to end. So basically. It lasts for 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And right after like 2 and a half minutes or 3 minutes, you, your ally, uses. So you can pretty much have Freezing Rain active for the entire game duration. That's what you want to do. You got to do something now. Actually, Ericsson purchased the outpost. Like they are playing Tom and Jerry. Can't, can't, can't touch this. Did, 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 did. So, all eyes on the powerpoints from Tim. Tim, 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 Tim. Three powerpoints. Saruman is reloading. Level 6 will take you 2 minutes and 30 seconds. There comes the war chant. And freezing rain is going to be used from somebody. It's actually being used from Ericsson. Okay? 
And also Matius, I think. Now, Matius didn't use this freezing rain yet. So they have leadership a bit, but the level 10 army is still crazy strong. Lourdes, level 5. Balrog is reloading. Matius refusing to use his freezing rain. Relying heavily on the, you know, level advantage from his army. Three furnaces from Ericsson to stay in the game. Oh, Tim, 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 Tim. Watch this. Watch this. Do it. Are they not planning to use the Balrog here? Looks like not. But remember, Gondor has almost AUD. And most importantly, Matthias will be able to summon his Balrog for a second time in about 20 seconds. Oh, the wizard. Ericsson, heal, 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 heal. Use Will of Saruman. He's going to use the Will of Saruman. Lourdes got crippled. He's gonna still die. There is no other heal. Lourdes gonna get in safety. Balrog from Matthews almost available. He's gonna use it right here to save his Lourdes, I think. And Lourdes gonna die. Will he summon here? That's the big question. The answer is yes. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Swords are no more useful. He's gonna whip this dude, that's certain, right? He's gonna whip Saruman. Oh, don't run into him, lords! Come here! Oh, he actually double hit them! Master and servant! Your stuff is broken. <laughs> and can of level 10 unlocked. Did he... Okay, he's summoning... Tim is summoning the Balrog offensively, but keep in mind, there are three level three production buildings, and you can't, or two level three production buildings, and you can't one-shot them. You can't. You also need to use Ignite if you want to deal any sort of damage. Oh, he's using the Scream. Scary. Ooh. <laughs> Deals no damage. He's gonna Breath Fire without the Ignite that won't even kill the level three Blacksmiths. Your Ignite is essential. It will buff up your damage by 200%. Which also, you know, impacts the damage output from your breath fire. Ganov got crippled. AOD has been special summoned. Absolute massacre. Two outposts for um, Ericsson. But I think they are about to be destroyed. How many power points does Ericsson have? He has 17, but he has no army to get the missing three power points. That's the problem. He has 3.5k though. And he's trying to get his Saruman back in the business. Keep in mind that Saruman losing him all alone will actually give you a lot of power points. So maybe you can get a beautiful fireball off. You can eventually get a juicy warm tongue and then you die with Saruman. And this all alone might get you the three power points you are missing to summon your own Balrog. But in the meantime, your ally might be defeated. Your ally might be defeated actually because his castle is about to be destroyed. And also a similar situation to Tim. He has 37 out of 400 available command points. He is... Demolishing everything. Orfang will be shattered into pieces. And Tim. And when you spell it backwards, Mitt has been defeated. Okay? So Ericsson, the last man standing. Two outposts against the world. Literally. We have two castles for Gondor. Two castles for Isengard. Summoning the Balrog here was a big mistake. And here is why. Imagine... Okay, let's assume... You can destroy the whole castle with your Balrog. It wouldn't even do too much. Because Gondor has still a whole castle around this location. So he won't be defeated. What you want to do instead, you want to kill this army. It's going to steal a couple of them. Fireball. Oh, okay, hold on a second. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, the Balrog. You got to use it though. There comes the Easter Light against the Uruk Pit. It's a new meta. Ericsson's Saruman is coming in a little bit. Oh, you can't get away from me. Fireball, whip him. <laughs> oh, I'm a servant of the secret fire. <laughs> and I am Morgoth's servant. One Gondonite against the wizard. Um, okay. 
Balrog doesn't care about friend or foe. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already because it's for free. I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.